pop. Blinks forward to the side there. Doesn't quite find anybody. Ichi. Okay, they've seen the first one. RTK. That's not really the hero they wanted to go for at first. Good Sonic Wave. Samael actually jumps for DDZ in the back, but now he gets hexed up. He actually is going to be caught here, but that's just the Aegis. And BKBs are going to be running out soon. That's why YJ runs forward with the plasma field. Starts trying to intercept oh, Universal. Samael. The rest of the team focuses on going on Samael, but he's actually been saved by the Glimmer Cave. Here comes that epicenter. ZTY is going to be the target. Easily burst it down. The rest of the team going for Fear, though. Samael jumps over, finishes off Lanham. Fear managed to make the blink away on top of that one, Samael, right in the middle of all these heroes, but he's got enough mana to be able to make a long jump out. Now the universe comes back into play. ROTK. Starts going for him on the left-hand side. ROTK starts going for Samael, but can't quite get him now. Intercepted by the Shuriken, and it looks like everyone else from Evil Genius has actually managed to get out. If they, they lose two, and all EG dropped was that Aegis. If they had vision in that fight for Samael when he got Glimmer Cape by PPD, they would have won that fight. Yep. They would have killed Sumail right there, and they could have continued to go for the chase, and oh, wow. Sumail's going to get a free kill. Yeah. He might actually go down, though. He's only got a little bit more mana left. Last bit of ball lightning jump, but he gets caught off the tail end of the impale. So that one exchange, the very hand exchange from him for ROTK is not worth it, but the big picture-wise, Evil Genius has definitely won that fight. Oh, man. I feel so bad for Ehome because that's two fights in a row that just... If things broke their way a little bit better, they could have won. Yeah, if they just had counter vision. I mean, that was such a good. That was such a good plan. Like YJ basically utilizing the last couple of seconds of BKB and his natural tankiness runs towards the rest of the team, especially Universe, right? Like he's trying to address Universe, trying to make sure that that guy does not get off a good epicenter, and the rest of his team just centers on the Storm Spirit. That was such a smart plan. In the middle of such a hectic team fight like that, they immediately made the right call. It's just the prep wasn't there. They didn't have the counter vision. If you look at EG's lineup, they don't actually have physical damage. Like the Storm Spirit is probably their best physical damage dealer. Fear's gone for the Aghanim Scepter into the Lincolns, a pretty defensive build that heavily centers around his ultimate. Uh, Sumail's going to go for the Shivas, no Hex or anything like that. No or He does have the Orchid, I guess, but he's the main physical damage dealer. So if they're able to pop Sumail in that fight, get him out of the way, slow, down, slow him down, and then chase the rest of EG, they conceivably could have won that fight, and in a pretty dominating fashion, too. Mm -hmm. Because the Razor's incredibly tanky. Yeah. Um, and same with the Bloods here. He's got 2k HP with 15 armor. So they probably could have won that fight if you rerun that fight with just one sentry. Yeah. Because they yeah. locked down Sumail, he was silenced, but then the invis comes in, he waits out the silence, turns everything around for them. But To, to make a point clear, the, the physical damage, the reason you're pointing out the lack of physical damage on EG is the fact that the physical damage is usually sustained, right? Like the rest of magic damage that evil geniuses have, essentially you throw it out and you're kind of done. So if they manage to take out the sustained damage of the Storm Spirit, Evil Geniuses just eventually would have run out of steam in that fight, wouldn't have been able to kill as many heroes, and Ehome just would have steamrolled them from there. Yeah, but you can't really mess up fights against a Bounty Hunter because things do just get more dire. The difference in net worth is now approaching 12k. Uh, the difference in XP is probably the more troubling statistic is it's up to 15k right now. But again, Ehome... The chance is still there. The way that you should look at it is not the fact that they're down 12k, it's more that they haven't had a perfect fight, and they're still coming close. When it comes to the point where they have a perfect fight and they get stomped, then yes, that's enough for you to call it. But this is why comebacks exist, because Ehome can still get a better fight off than they have so far. Like, they can get better bashes on ROTK, they could kill Sumail in the beginning with a little bit more coordination. So I think that the hope is still there if you're an Ehome fan. Aghanims is the next choice for our Razor, making him even tankier. I mean, overall, I think I really like this build from the Razor. Um, his choice to try and go for the SNY first was maybe just a little bit questionable because they weren't far enough ahead, I think, at that point. But um, he offset then, you know, complete the BKB, go back for the SNY, Aghanims. I mean, there's just so many stats here on this hero, and he's going to be a very good source of sustained damage. Evil Geniuses, if they can't pop him early on, if they're not able to focus him down, Razor's just going to tear the fight apart if he can lock down heroes. And that's the big problem, right? Evil Geniuses are incredibly mobile in these fights. They've got four out of their five heroes that have some sort of movement speed or jump. Uh, track being given to everyone, Storm Spirit and Queen of Pain obviously blinking, and then our Sand King with Burrow Strike and Blink as well. AUI's got a Blink Dagger too, so the mobility oh, true. of EG should not be underestimated. Uh, the key factor here is that if Sumail can get on top of the lion, he would get rid of his biggest opponent mm -hmm. off the bat. Like, a lot of what Ehome's uh, fortunes lie in are how well DDC can position himself. Because right now, he's been doing such a good job of not getting picked off, but oh, this could no. all change here as EG are set up for this. and.
But do they think it's just a one-man pickoff? The rest of E-Home are around. Tamel made a big jump straight for the background. Lion will be interested to take him out. He's running low on mana. The rest of E-Home are popping their BKBs and will be able to lock down PPD, who does have that Glimmer Cape to help him survive a little bit longer. CTY is actually looking for more kills. Chain Frost does quite some havoc to uh, E-Home. At the end, it's a one-for-one trade-off. Oh, they're going to oh, be engaged on this is CTY. The BKB. He's got his BKB, though. Pop by CTY, and Samael's actually running low on mana. They're going to try and make a commitment for him. YJ, they just turn on to Samael. He's got a lot of armor thanks to that Shiva. Will be able to get the kill. The Bloodseeker now turns for RTK. There's the epicenter. Wiping out the rest of E Home, and they don't Sumail even love Samael. What a bait from the kid. My god, Evil Genius has just baited that E Home out so beautifully. All right, Universe just. If there's an MVP, Universe has just played this game so well. His constant repositioning to get that epicenter off, it's it's the fact that he doesn't just use it when he sees the opportunity of Sumail going in. He waits out the BKBs. He's ever so patient. Sumail trusts his team, zips in, takes all the focus on him, and E-Home, they smell blood. They're like, this is the fight we're going to win. We're finally going <laughs> to yeah, kill Sumail. Yeah, he's got no mana, but the thing is, I mean, he had Shivas, and even if he did die, it was still EG cleaning the fight up perfectly. Yeah, and Universe finally finds that opportunity for that big epicenter, and oh my, is they might even take this tower down. And that was so many track kills on AUY, who's yeah. just absolutely so rich right now. This is going to be a 20k gold lead if they manage to pick up this tower. ROTK is charging in, but still it's need just for another show. 10 seconds for the Bloodseeker. They may actually be able to make the full commitment to the melee racks. No, EG back up. They don't want to make take a risk, and I can understand why. They're so far ahead at this point. They should not try and force another fight with uh, Epicenter down. BKB is coming back up for Ehome. I was getting really excited for Ehome. I thought there was a point right there where it just felt like YJ couldn't die. And he was able yeah. to survive the initial onslaught. I thought things were going to be able to turn around for them, but that window of opportunity I was talking about where, you know, you're looking for that perfect fight that'll happen yeah. is slowly starting to close. You also got to point out Samael's beautiful initiation to start all that off. Like when they jumped YJ, and I, I thought for a second actually that evil geniuses were being baited out by the Razor completely, and they were just like, oh, let's just kill the Razor and back out. But EG knew. I mean, they knew Ehome was sitting behind that Razor, and Samael jumping in with the Shiva's active way to the back, straight where the lion was, hit that Orchid on him and immediately popped him. As you said, like, killed the biggest threat to Samael. That's the thing that you should always weigh as any type of mobile initiator is who does the most to you versus how much HP do they have. Yeah. A lion has 7 armor and 777 HP, but he does so much to your hero. Why not just kill him? Universe, lean things off here. Fear comes in with the scythe of ice targeting, and they're actually going to try and go for the razor first here. Double BKB is activated. They go for fear, trying to lock him down with the glimmer cape and blink away. He will be able to get some distance. Cty keeps on going, but Universe, he's going to pop the epicenter. They actually control Cty and burst him down. Now the epicenter comes in, going straight for RTK, who's working it up. He will go down as well. Lana pops the tombstone, but what factor is it really this late into the game? DDC hits the impale in the universe. Maybe they can get that one pick off. Finger of death is enough to secure that one but everyone else from ehome is gonna fall eg win yet another team fight and gg is the call ehome i think are just so desperate to find something and team fight after team fight they just keep losing and losing they gotta know they're a drastic net worth behind the thing is though if you're ehome you're kind of okay with how you lost because you did set the blueprint for how you can disrupt EG's farm early. They gank Sumail often. Oh, they put they the pressure jump on in. They're going to be able to grab Lil. They push annoyed maybe, the maybe hell out of fear with that dual lane at top. They have and even that bottom lane, it. the Razor was doing okay. <laughs> it was just but about that the, one uh, fight mid where everything started to hurt. And then from there, okay. even the subsequent fights were still really sort of close. Up a couple times. Yeah, I mean, we can. I, I, I'm counting on my hands at least five mistakes that were made from Ehome that are very easily corrected. The kill on Sumail in the beginning, where they they didn't miss a rupture. The the pickoff there. At the really bottom lane, where Samael got away from the infants, the, them going into the epicenter. Uh, I mean, this can be fixed also... by Ehome, and hopefully they'll be able to, to figure that out for game number two. But we now pass it off to the panel to talk about that game. Actually, jump in. That's the approach. Thank you. Give everybody from the. Thank you very much, Cap. Really happy to hear that he knows how to count on his hands. It's a very important skill. But this as Blitz was saying, uh, Blitz was. What did he say? He said, "If you're Ehome, you're okay with how you lost." Do you agree with that statement? I do not agree. I think they had a pretty good lineup. They had a decent start. 
It all went wrong with that mid push, and mm-hmm. they even had the right idea. If you saw the way that they pushed the mid T one tower, they were all like relatively spread out. It was right around the time that Sand Kings get their blink dagger. Like a free farming Sand King generally like maybe a little before eight, so anywhere in between like. Uh, nine, I, nine to thirteen, I think is pretty reasonable. It was like I think a little after eleven. Mm-hmm. And the way they approached it, they had a ward on the high ground to spot like into the T two because that's a very common sinking hiding spot. And then the tombstone was placed. I think they spotted Split out seconds. the sinking like right as he was catching yeah. every center. That was like the game defining moment. And then like after they 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 broke even that fight, but they with their lineup they should have probably like you know they wanted two zero them pressure to t2 and then you right. know kind of control the map from there and that just halted all of their momentum and they were just fighting an uphill battle from that point forward yeah from that point forward as well they they actually stopped trying to fight which because they knew they weren't going to win any fights if they were actually trying to find them and then that eg could do, just do whatever they want they found some pickups themselves and even though like sumil was shut down early on in the game they just they just tried to, like, like, EG was able to play their own game, and therefore EG was able to, in the end, just get so far ahead. Compared yeah, I mean, to on that end, I mean, it does sound like really just trying to give credit to EG, of course, did play very well. Uh, Winter, what's your take on that? Yeah, I think that was the most important moment that happened in the game. It changed the whole face of the game entirely. If Ehome were to cancel the blink from the Sand King with the Tombstone just by a fraction of a second quicker, I think the whole game would have been different. They would be taking towers continuously after that because you won't have Epicenter to, de- to defend the next push and everything would go E-Home's way. But because that fight didn't go their way, I mean, they sort of traded even, like you mentioned, but there was track, so it, it becomes uneven because of that. And their lineup is supposed to, you know, control the map at that point, their strongest, that's their timing window. They mm-hmm. have to be able to take towers. They have to be able to take fights. And yet, then again, they did a very good job of knowing that they might have, like EG might have a blink on the Sand King. They were doing everything right about scouting. It was just like a matter of their, them being really unlucky with the timing of Epicenter still going off, even though they placed the Tombstone. It didn't look like a close game from the net worth chart, but it was a really close game. I right. Would say. It was just that one key moment. Yeah, that I, was just the defining. Yeah. Like you look at a replay, and that was the defining moment that changed the whole game. That could have been like all over if they wasted the epicenter, they lose the Sand King, and you you lose another tower after that. The whole game would have been just different. Right. As you mentioned, that was that kind of prime timing moment for yeah. Ehome. Now, it sounds like we do have a highlight coming up from Game 1 for Ehome versus EG. Uh, and as we wait for that to come up, now, something we've discussed earlier is that if you're a weaker team, generally sometimes we've seen them like lose to a hero pick and say, all right, we just don't want to deal with that and ban that out right away. Do you think Sanking made a big enough impact that we might see Ehome ban it? In the second phase, I would say yes, because he did make a very big impact, and the, the fighting ability of, of EG that, that that they got with just that one hero was, was uh, quite insane, and they, they put it to work really brilliantly. I think there are heroes that can substitute it. It's just you have to be aware of Ehome's strategy before that happens. Um, like, if you expect in a five-man push a lot, you can go the Keeper to Light route that Secret likes. You can go, like, Ancient Apparition plus Sand King or Ancient Apparition plus someone else, which just halts pushes dead in this track, especially with heroes that heal up, like Bloodseeker, Dazzle, Undying. I think that there are multiple ways to counter, but you have to see it coming. So it just depends on how early in the draft that Ehome commits to this five-man sweep-your-tower-down map control strategy. Okay, what about you, Winter? I think it's mostly back again what I mentioned in the draft. They are using team fight composition against what Ehome had, which is pushing. They want to group out and push, so that's generally a very good way of dealing with it. And it was it's just a matter of I feel a lot of it is just unlucky this game. Honestly, they played mm-hmm. as as well as they could in the lanes and 